on everybody, my name is Brad, aka Bread. So, there's gonna be four parts of this video. We're gonna have what languages to learn, where do I go to learn these languages, what editor should I use, and then some really important tips once you get started, okay? Now, this video is mainly for beginners. If you are an intermediate, you've learned a language, and you're like, hmm, I don't really know where to go from here, I'm gonna make a separate video for you. So, what you're gonna wanna do first is decide what you really wanna get out of programming. So you can become a web developer, you can become an app developer, you can become um, a game developer, or you're just unsure and just want to do some general programming. The thing is, it doesn't really matter where you start. You don't need to be scared about, oh, I want to be an app developer now, but what if I want to be a web developer later? It really doesn't matter because across all of these languages, the fundamentals are usually the same. A lot of these languages can be used for other things. So a language that's used in web development might also be used in game development. These aren't forks in the road where you're choosing a path and going down a long road where you can't come back from. Um, we're gonna start with web development. So with web development, the two front end languages, well, there's like a few, but like the two main, which are HTML and CSS, they're not really programming languages. They are design markup languages, um, which, every single site uses on the internet. So it's okay that they're not actual programming languages, but you're not gonna learn too many fundamentals out of them, but they're still challenging at first, for sure. So if you wanna do web development, definitely look into HTML and CSS. Now with web development, there's two areas. There is front end and back end. Front end is mainly the visuals, and that's where HTML and CSS come in, and even a language called JavaScript. And then there's the back end, which is all the behind the scenes stuff, the users, the data, which is very important and you notice it's actually a lot harder to learn that. But in the end, you're gonna to wanna to know both if you wanna create a full website from scratch. I'd recommend JavaScript right now because JavaScript can is used in the front end for design a lot, but it can also be used as a back end now, which is crazy. So if you learn JavaScript for front end, you're gonna be able to use it later. So it's a safe bet to learn JavaScript right now because there's a lot of applications to it and you're gonna see as we go down this list, JavaScript is used in a lot of areas of computer science. So I think it's good to look at what top sites are using right now. I wrote a little list, so I'm gonna um, go through these, um, just so you know. So right now, Facebook, Google, Amazon, three huge top sites, they all use JavaScript um, for their front end, and obviously they use HTML and CSS, they really have to, but um, they all use JavaScript, so the big companies are using it. For back end, we have Facebook using, and these are just a few, they use a lot more, but Facebook uses Python, Java, and PHP. Google uses Java and Python, and Yahoo uses PHP. Like I said, they use a lot more than that, but um, those are a few languages they use. My recommendations, um, I would learn either, like once you learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, if you wanna dig deeper into backend development, I would consider learning Python. Python's really cool because there's a framework called Django, which you don't really have to get into right now, but um, you can learn a ton from Python. Okay, so we're gonna move on to game development next. It's a little bit different. I know a lot of you on this channel are subscribed to me because I play games, so I'm sure you're interested in that. It depends if you wanna do web games or um, you know, like actual games on your computer. Uh, if you wanna do web games, once again, JavaScript can be used for web games. If you wanna learn about game development, I would consider learning the Unity game engine, um, where you can kind of learn some 3D modeling and then you can get more um, languages tied into it. I know Unity uses like their own form of JavaScript. They also use C Sharp. The thing with a lot of like, you'll hear a lot of languages called like C, C Sharp, C++. I personally think they're not that readable because they're lower level languages and they have the potential to do a lot. So you might not want to start learning stuff like C or C Sharp, but you can. No, it's been done before, so don't feel discouraged. If you want to become an app developer, um, you gotta decide you want to do iPhone or Android. Like I said, in the end, it really doesn't matter which one you learn because it, once you learn one language, it's gonna be a lot easier to, easier to learn the second or the third. Um, iPhone, you have to learn a language called Swift. And if you wanna develop iPhone apps, you actually have to have a Mac computer. So not all of you might be able to do that. You might have to develop for Android first if you have a Windows machine or Linux. Um, so Android uses a language called Java and that is completely different from JavaScript. Don't ever say the two as if they're the same thing, you'll get yelled at. Um, I know from experience when I was starting out. I would totally recommend you get started with Java. I know a lot of people like how iPhones can be like beautiful with their software and stuff like that, but totally, I would learn Java because you might not start out in math development with Java. You can actually just program a lot of cool games and little programs in Java, so 
um, that's definitely a good start. All right, so where are you gonna go to learn all this stuff, right? Um, I'm gonna leave links in the description. Some are paid, some are free. If they're paid, they're usually really cheap. Um, Code Academy is a great free resource. They offer almost like a ton of languages in their catalog. It's all free. I know there's like a pro version, but you don't need it, I don't think. Um, another one is Udemy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, they usually have like $10 a course and their courses offer a ton of content. So once you maybe experimented with some free content and you're ready to like um, get more detailed, you can maybe pay $10 for a course. There's a website called like BGR Store and they have a like a pay what you want and usually it's like 10 or $12 and you get like 10 courses in all different languages that you can even use later. I have like so many I didn't even learn yet, but they're video courses. So I'm gonna leave a link to that. It's like usually pay what you want. You have to pay like what the average is. So it's usually anywhere from 10 to $20, but you get so much content for the value. It's um, really good. And also a website called Hacker Rank, which is more practice problems for the language of your choice. And this is really good because it is a little bit more boring, right? But these are the questions that you'll see on university exams. These are the questions that are gonna be asked at interviews. It's really questions that make you think about the fundamentals of programming. In terms of editors, where you actually write the code in, you can really choose anyone you want. Some cool ones for web development. There's one called like brackets.io, and as you write HTML and CSS, your web page will update live as you write code. So I really think that's a cool one. If, you, if you're like a visual learner and you wanna see right away what's being changed, they highlight the changes. Really cool editor, it's simple too. Uh, aside from that, you can use Sublime Text for any language, you can use Atom for any language, and if you want to do Java, I recommend um, an IDE called Eclipse, so it's an editor, and uh, that's what we use at Rutgers, so totally recommend that. And lastly is tips. Please take these into consideration, because um, if I knew these before, and I could have learned programming a lot faster, okay? Um, for one, do not memorize code. I'm gonna link you guys to a lot of video tutorials where sometimes they might not explain everything and you don't know it, and you kinda just copy what they're doing. You mimic what they're doing. Um, no, don't do that. Do a ton of research. Every single time someone types in something and you don't know what it is and they don't explain it to your needs, Google it, because you're gonna find very good explanations. Once you Google it, write down it, put it in a doc sheet or something, but. Just Google everything that you don't know because it's much better to spend a week on one project and fully understand it than do seven projects in a week, one a day, and really just copy and mimic what the video creator did. It's a very not good way to learn at all. Um, another thing, just practice doing on your own. So once you watch a video tutorial, apply that knowledge and make your own creation. Um, this will be hard at first, because obviously you don't learn everything from one video, so you might have to do a lot of your own research. But the more you research, it's a good habit, so um, you can do that. I recommend going on Stack Overflow, it's like a question and answer site. You're going to realize that almost every programmer uses this, because you can ask a question, it gets answered pretty fast, and a lot of questions have already been asked. So that's really it, that covers everything. Um, thank you guys so much for walking, watching. Um, if you have any questions and you don't know where to get started or you want me to tailor something specifically to you, feel free to message me and I'll reply and try to help you start in the best way that you possibly can. And that's it. Thank you.